In China, a new epic project called the Sichuan-Tibet Railway is under construction, linking Chengdu and Lhasa. This 1,592 kilometers railway passes through the western part of the Sichuan Basin, then rises 5,000 m and crosses the roof of the world Tibetan plateau, which is called the Sky High Road. This was reported by a group of Chinese scientists and designers from the Center for Geotechnical and Structural Research at Shandong University, located in Jinan. Over the past decades, the region along the Sichuan-Tibet Railway has been designated a no-go zone for railway projects as a result of the world's most remarkable topography, most active tectonic movement, most numerous mountain hazards, and most vulnerable ecological environment. Thus, this unprecedented railway program is recognized as the most challenging problem in the world, from a technical, economic, and environmental point of view. High altitude is accompanied by plateau hypoxia and extreme climate, the wide variation in topographic relief leads to inconvenient transport conditions and poor power supply and communications infrastructure. These extreme conditions do pose enormous challenges to railway construction and maintenance. From Ya'an to Lhasa, the average altitude along the Sichuan-Tibet Railway remains at 3,800 m, and the elevation difference ranges from 2,000 to 5,000 m. In addition, the high temperature poses a serious threat to the health of workers and equipment operating in the tunnel. Given the great disparity in topography, more than 70% of the railway consists of deep tunnels, highly susceptible to problems of high geostresses and high geotemperatures. In particular, high geostress leads to frequent and serious risks of rock impacts in tunnels, threatening the safety of construction personnel and equipment. Since the Indian plate collided with the Eurasian plate about 50 million years ago, the Tibetan plateau has suffered the most intense tectonic movement in the world. Consequently, numerous active faults are widespread in the regions encompassing the Sichuan-Tibet Railway. Most active faults are characterized by high movement speed and frequent seismicity. One prominent example is the Xi'an Shuehe Fault Zone which is sliding at a rate of 912 MMYR-1 and has experienced more than 10 earthquakes of magnitude M6.5 over 1700 years. The serious problems for the Sichuan-Tibet Railway caused by active faults are reflected in three main aspects. First, the railroad could be disrupted by intersecting active faults. This dislocation depends not only on continuous creep along faults, but also on surface failure caused by earthquakes. Secondly, a devastating earthquake can destroy railway structures including bridges, tunnels, and station buildings due to tremors. Landslides can block rivers and cause huge lakes to form, subsequently collapsing and flooding areas downstream. Previous seismic events suggest that hazard chains will affect the Sichuan-Tibet Railway for much longer than the relatively short aftershocks from earthquakes. Finally, fault movement can trigger geohazard chains. In particular, creep and seismic activity on faults can form and widen cracks on mountain ridges or slopes, increasing the frequency of rockfalls, landslides, or debris flows, numerous mountain hazards, and increasingly dangerous chains. These hazards can disrupt railroads, infrastructure, and ecosystems hampering railroad operations and possibly triggering chains of hazards. Along the Sichuan-Tibet Railway, steep terrain and densely fractured lithologies result from the interaction between tectonic uplift, valley incision, and fault movement, ultimately causing the world's most numerous mountain hazards. Large-scale mountain hazards are easily encountered along the railway, reflected in 418 rockfalls, 580 landslides, and 1,132 mud flows. Meanwhile, mountain hazards are clustered into a much wider corridor along the active fault. Moreover, increasingly severe weather conditions are increasing the frequency of hazard chains along the railway. Climate warming is promoting the ablation of glaciers and the formation of many glacial lakes, which can later collapse and cause floods that are likely to turn into mud flows. Also, severe drought can damage vegetation. The exposed rock is susceptible to rainfall, causing more mud flows than usual. 
In addition, extreme precipitation can cause rockfalls and landslides. Landslide debris on slopes can be further recovered by rain and cause mud flows. The Tibet Plateau is the source of many rivers and also plays an important role in regulating the climate of the Northern Hemisphere. Thus, the ecosystem is complex and environmental protection is a top priority when constructing a railway. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway passes through the china los Plateau, Sichuan-Yunnan Ecological Barrier, the Tibetan Plateau Ecological Barrier, the Chonglai Mountain Biodiversity Reserve, and the Gongashan National Nature Reserve. These places are home to about 100 rare species of plants and animals. Due to the varied terrain and extreme weather conditions, rocks on the Tibetan Plateau can erode quickly, making the environment susceptible to soil erosion, land desertification, and mountain hazards. Therefore, the ecological environment along the Sichuan-Tibet Railway is the most vulnerable in the world and is easily affected by socioeconomic activities. In particular, building a railway by building bridges, digging tunnels, and cutting off hillsides can destroy vegetation, ultimately leading to soil erosion and geological hazards. Revegetation of biodiverse areas is known to be challenging. Also, the construction of the railway may impede the migration route of wild animals. Thus, the vulnerability of nature will create unprecedented challenges for the conservation of the ecological environment. Regarding the successful construction of the Sichuan-Tibet Railway, the National Natural Science Foundation of China, the Ministry of Science and Technology, the Ministry of Ecology and Environment, the Ministry of Natural Resources, the National Development and Reform Commission and the Railway Group first conducted a correlated study several decades ago and began Special Funds Project in 2019. It is also recommended here to take several countermeasures to overcome some of the existing problems. To anticipate short-term or long-term hazard risks, it is necessary to establish an integrated aerospace to ground-to-ground -ground monitoring and early warning system using the Internet of Things and intelligent artificial technologies. Global positioning satellites, remote sensing, unmanned aerial vehicles, ground-based SR, synthetic aperture radar, and sensor integration technology will be used to monitor warning information about mountainous or underground geological hazards. The collected data can subsequently be processed using artificial intelligence, where the level of hazard warning can be determined. Finally, hazard alert information will be posted in real time. At the same time, new building materials and structures are required to withstand earthquake fault displacement. The new material can automatically heal seismic cracks by releasing polymer composites. New tunnel construction designs that use flexible joints containing hyperelastic and self-healing shape memory alloy SMA, elements have the potential to resist fault dislocation. In addition, self-resetting SMA dampers can waste earthquake impact energy. Moreover, to protect the ecological environment, the rock and soil debris field should be kept away from rare wildlife habitats and water resource regions. Revegetation of debris fields is necessary to prevent soil erosion and secondary geological hazards. Overall, new disaster theories, materials, and designs will need to be developed to overcome existing problems. And humanity must focus on learning to realize the harmonious fusion of nature and railways. All these innovations will contribute to the scientific and technological development of China and ultimately the whole world.